Hello everyone. In this video, I would like to introduce a little bit the Contact Lua API. Um, yeah, give you some information around it and also uh, how to set it up and get going with it and maybe alleviate some confusion around, um, yeah, what it can do for you and what it can't do for you, what it's for basically. So before we dive right into it, um, I want to mention a little bit uh, the paradigm behind the whole thing. So as opposed to when you're, uh, me building an instrument with a KSP script, <laughs> um, which is the real-time control, right? In KSP, you handle everything from MIDI events and from like the, the business logic, as we call it, of your instrument in the UI, and uh, basically everything that the user interacts with and uh, the instrument in itself, the engine and the interaction, right? Um, the Contact Lua API is a little bit different where it allows you to kind of take imperative uh, action on Contact and tell Contact to do things. So right now with the mouse, right, I'm going here to File, I'm going to Load, and I click Load. for And yeah, this menu shows up and I can decide to load something, right? Um, so this is the way the actual API even works. It works all the way to the top on the application level, allowing you to tell Contact to do commands such as File, Load a File, such as File, Save a File. And from the top level, zoom um, progressively deeper inside. So from the um, from the application level to the rack level, um, controlling different instruments and behaviors in the rack, and down to the instrument level. Now this allows you to um, really uh, automate a lot of processes around building sample libraries, uh, and yeah, just do a lot of uh, a lot of cool things. But um, maybe a disclaimer here. If you don't understand what the API can do for you, you probably don't even need the API, right? So just for building an instrument, you're just building your, your library, maybe you have no use for this. So this is more for complex and automated and kind of advanced workflows. Okay, let's get into it. So first thing we have to do is actually set this thing up. So if we go over here to the help tab, and actually this is a brand new computer. So there, the API, like I never did this on this computer. So we're just kind of doing this live, we're setting up live. So um, the two things you kind of need, actually, let's go one step back. So I have installed Contact and I have installed my, um, my text editor, which in my case is Visual Studio Code. And I recommend you go with Visual Studio Code or Sublime because these are the two supported um, flows. If you get it working in other flows, great, but what, why, why invent the wheel, right? So, okay, let's just go directly to the online Contact uh, API documentation. This is actually the first thing you should actually do, um, read the fucking manual. And here it really kind of um, explains what, what I already mentioned. So the Lua API is a technology which enables programmatic contact instrument edit, editing and creation workflows. And it's a straightforward API approach. Um, and let's, yeah, let's skip the introductions and actually go all the way into the um, setup. So if we click, oh, oh, do I have to allow cookies all the time? What the fuck? All right, so we're gonna skip the basic usage and, and all of that, but we're going to go to the VS Code setup. So that's what we want. So it's really kind of simple. It really says, we're gonna follow the instructions just one by one. So Control Shift P, this will open the command palette. Let's remember that, okay. And we're, we're looking for tasks, open user tasks, and we choose other from the list. And we're gonna have to paste the text below in the newly created file and then saving. So let's just go and do that. So let's first of all copy the, the code, uh, as simple as that. And then we need to go Control Shift P and then tasks open user tasks. All right, so I go here. How about Control Shift P? Oh, it's not doing it. Oops, why not? Control Shift P. Oh, it's Command Shift P. All right, so uh, Command Shift P, and we said, um, what was it? Op tasks open user tasks. So if you don't remember, yeah, you just go and look back. So commands, tasks, and oh, there it is already. Cool. Open user tasks, and we do other, and we take this, we paste uh, the thing, we save. Um, and one thing to note here, so look look what it's actually doing. So this is going to be opening contact uh, from VS Code and you're, we're telling it the location of contact. So this is the default locations as native access installs them. But you can, if you have contact somewhere else, you can actually change it and um, yeah, I mean, to, to point, basically you want to point to where contact is. Cool, once I did that, I saved. 
I can close uh, the, the JSON thingamajig. I'm going to quit contact because what we want to do is that we want to allow um, VS Code to actually run contact. So now, once I did that, if I go uh, to terminal and I go to run task, you will see that contact seven now appears here above. Cool. So if I click it, oh, it's the first time, fine. I give, I allow access. And then now you see executing tasks, application, blah, 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 contact seven. So basically it ran contact. Cool, amazing. Now in theory, um, contact is feeding back all, all the, um, all the, debug information or whatever whatever you're catching with the terminal from any case any Lua script that we will be running it will feed it into this terminal so this is kind of the very useful flow for working with the Lua API kind of kind of a must right you you want to see the output of what you're doing but there's one more step we have to take um, if contact by default does not allow you to run the Lua scripts if you see here there is no there's no mention of Lua here in the file menu but if we go to options and then we go to the developer tab and you notice here by enabling developer features, contact will be able to modify and execute scripts via Lua, yada, 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 yada. That's exactly what we want. So we're gonna enable developer features and you see already something appeared here behind. Let's close this. And now we can run Lua scripts. So we have some new options here to run a Lua script, we run the last script and run recent scripts. We actually have no scripts, so there's nothing for us to run. Um, but what we can do is Let's go back here and, oops, why do I have to allow it every time? So there will be, uh, I think, is it in the introduction and setup? Let's have a look. So there are tutorial files that you can download and they are available right here. So straight up from the manual, there's a separate zip and it's downloaded. Let's open it up. Contact Lua API tutorials. Amazing. So you see there's a bunch of stuff inside. Let's go all the way deep deep in, into the folder. And we can do this a number of ways. So uh, we can actually go into the contact file browser over here and um, actually find, oh, everything is for the first time. So we can actually find uh, the Lua files. And if we reach the right place, there it is. If we double click now on a Lua file, it will run it. If we drag it into the rack, it will run it. Or if we drag it from outside, from over here, it will also run it. So let's try, um, whoa, let's try the first, uh, the first way. So we have the first tutorial, it's called Hello World. And I'm going to, well, let's have our, let's actually have this open and see what happens. So let's pull contact up a little bit and let's drop the Hello World. Whoa, so look, this is what happened. So it actually ran a script and it printed all the returns from that script into our terminal. And this is, remember this is because we ran contact as a task. So this is what this is for. And it returned a bunch of stuff. It told us hello world. It told us what contact version we we're running and a bunch of other stuff, uh, some paths and some information about the current contact version. It even printed a cool ASCII logo. And it even told us, yeah, yeah I had no errors. I finished running my Lua script and I succeeded. So this is, this is amazing. This means that everything is working. And from now you can actually, if you don't want to run tutorials and if you know what you're doing at this point, you can just take it from here, but let's have a look inside. Um, oh, you know what? Let's first of all, just, yeah, let's just do it. Um, let's just show. So I said we could, so we dragged it from the, um, from the finder. We can also run it from here and we can also drop the script on contact. You see it ran it three times now. So we should be having three times the logo, right? Once from the first drop, pop, pop. Basically it ran it three times. So up to you. I, and I guess the last kind of, well, there's two more, I guess not last. So you can rerun last Lua script. It'll start filling up the more scripts that you run. Um, sorry, the recent Lua script or really quickly um, just rerun the last Lua script. So if you're kind of um, playing around and maybe you have errors and you're testing your script, it's kind of annoying maybe to kind of drop it again. And so you can just do command um, F11, at least on Mac, that's the key command on Windows, there's also a command. All right, so at this point, let's have a look. So um, here there's also two ways. So I could actually throw it from here onto the uh, VS Code, or for convenience, if I already have this folder, maybe I even um, save this location, you know, um, 
and I can really quickly get to my Lua script and I have it from inside contact so I can right click. I can open containing folder, but I can also do open tutorial 01 in text editor. So, okay, cool. It literally did that. Um, it even recognized that this is a Lua file. And looking at all these returns, we can see the code here. It's literally telling it to do that. So we have a bunch of print commands um, and yeah, they're really, they're printing the, the printing text. And then they're printing a bunch of stuff that you can see that it's querying contact and returning the, re the, the return of the answer to the query. So these are, this, these are actually already the Lua API commands. This is what we mean by an API. So we're basically um, by script asking things from the contact application. Now we're just getting things. So we're getting something, right? We're saying, hey, contact, what is your current version? And contact tells us. But we can also be setting things. So this is just a very, very basic example. Um, we can move on. I don't know if really to show every single one of the tutorials because that kind of defeats the purpose. You should run the tutorials yourself. But let's just quickly kind of open and, and show that, yeah, they, they basically um, one by one uh, show things that the API can do. And then it's up to you to kind of creatively understand these concepts and use, it, use them for your usage. So it goes deeper and deeper, step by step, as we have shown. Uh, we can, yeah, maybe let's just run another, the second one still. And here you see it created, um, it created a bank instrument. Uh, let's not go really, but it gets deeper and deeper inside the instrument. So for example, in this one, oops, in this one, we're already going deeper um, than the rack. We're loading an instrument. We're telling contact to do that. We're telling contact. Well, first we're telling it to reset the multi. So there's multiple things here, right? It's the rack level. And then we're loading the instrument on an instrument level. And then we're manipulating things inside the instrument. We're uh, telling it to set. Um, well, here we're mostly getting things, but we can also set things as mentioned. So going one by one, uh, yeah, again, defeats the purpose. I encourage you to really kind of just uh, run the tutorial and then study the file. Run the tutorial and then study the file. It goes through all the, all the different things and even uh, down to eventually encoding and, and decoding in CW files and doing things like that. Um, the one tutorial that I do want to show a little bit because it kind of uh, pulls a lot of things together is this one, tutorial number 10. So what we're doing here, um, and this maybe maybe this gives you kind of a, yeah, this is kind of the, like the end goal and the idea of what you can, one of the things that you can achieve with the API. So basically we're taking um, nothing. We have an empty contact uh, and we're telling contact to uh, basically create a wavetable instrument from the wavetables that come with contact. Now that's really the example, but uh, at the same time, you could point it to another directory and create on the fly an instrument from your own samples and from your own case script. So let's go uh, specifically in this one, one by one, what we're doing. I will show back at the end of the video, again, the reference, and you will understand a little bit uh, more about these commands, but for the functionality itself. So we're resetting the multi. We're adding an instrument. Then we're creating um, a table with all the paths of all the wavetables that we find. Um, and then we're kind of mapping all these wavetables into the instrument. And then we're pointing the instrument to a KSP path, loading the KSP into the first KSP uh, script slot in the instrument. And then actually even saving the NKI. So it's saved and it's on, it's on our, um, yeah, basically on our computer. So if we try that, so instrument with wavetables, bam, it ran a script and it really created this instrument kind of out of thin air. Um, we can go to the mapping editor and we see that it really actually did it. So uh, it did the mapping as we requested and it loaded the KSP script and um, yeah, everything is attached and works. Now, some quick disclaimers. Uh, this is not about really kind of building the, like the flow of the instrument as far as um, the modulators and the way the groups are actually set up. This you cannot do as of this writing yet with the Lua API, but what you can manipulate is the mapping, the KSP script the, uh, that is attached to the um, instrument, the resource container and, and a bunch of other things. 
think about it as more of a, um, yeah, just a kind of macro and higher high level sort of way to construct an instrument. But the details and the, everything that has to do with real time manipulation, this is of course still about KSP scripting. So let's quickly go back to the manual. So because here, you know, I've been showing you a bunch of these commands, right? I've been telling you, hey, we're telling contact, do this, contact, do that. So where am I actually getting all this information? So aside from the tutorials, I think the tutorials actually tell a bunch of the story. But once you're starting to actually work with it yourself, you, I'm sure you kind of want to know what commands are available and wow, why is this like this with the cookies? That's so weird. So um, basically, you refer to the manual and the manual really tells you every single one of the available commands what they do um, as kind of a, 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 yeah, like kind of as a rule, most commands, they have a getter and a setter. So if you can, I don't know, uh, get the KSP script, you can set the, the KSP, P, <laughs> KSP script. If you can get the instrument name, you can set the instrument name. If you can get the options, you can set the options and yada, yada, yada. Um, here you actually see this is maybe a, a good important point. So you can set, for example, the instrument options. So this is all the stuff that is over here. Now, imagine you're building maybe a library like something like the contact factory library or a library that's based on tons of NKIs, right? Um, so, and you want to change a single thing in all of these NKIs, maybe you even have 100 or 200 NKIs. Um, it would be really, really tedious manual work to go one by one, right? And here you can just uh, kind of programmatically go over all the NKIs that you have, open them, set what you need, save them, and, and go on with your life. Um, so yeah, everything is listed here. Cookies again, of course. And this is kind of, um, yeah, all, all there is to it, really. And aside from the actual contact API, we also provide some um, tools for kind of interacting with the file system. So this is obviously very important because you're dealing with files, you're loading and unloading, um, saving, and yeah, there's a lot of creativity to be had here with all the file system access. Take note that this is actually, this, this file system access, this is actually the reason that this is behind um, this option over here. So you kind of have to be careful with the scripts that you're running because once you give file system access, in theory, you can run a Lua script that just deletes stuff from your system or whatnot. Uh, and then the last kind of API that is not maybe uh, directly, directly contact is the, the um, MIR music retrieval functions. These are the same functions that are available in KSP. And uh, you can use them the same way that you've used them in KSP. Just have a look again at the manual. So I think uh, as an introduction video, uh, let's close it right here. I do want to make a second video that shows um, a little bit beyond how you can get really creative with this thing. Because you can use basically, um, now that you have uh, con Lua in contact in this way, you can even sort of uh, in quotes, misuse it just as a running Lua interpreter, right? So you can expand this thing, um, just use it like any programming language that you can call from sort of like a command line. And you can make flows that mix uh, specific contact flows with more generic flows. So for example, you can import a library that allows you to, I don't know, normalize audio files and just run a Lua script that first normalizes the files and then maps them into the instrument as one example. Um, or as another example, you could run a script that um, downloads something from the internet and then maps uh, into contact. Whether it's NKA files that tell the instrument how it should be constructed or maybe it's even directly audio files. So maybe let's show those in some other videos. I hope this at least gave you a segue and can get you started with the Contact Lua API. Thank you.